Hello, and thank you for joining us today for Earth Echoes STEM Explore Virtual Field Trip, Solving Water Because Every Drop Counts, featuring Patricia Delcourt of Xylem. My name is Casey Gaylord Opaleski, and I am the STEM Explore Coordinator at Earth Echo International. And we're so excited to have students all over the world joining us tonight to learn about careers in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, this live event is part of STEM Explore, Earth Echo's newest program that is taking inspiration to access by telling the stories of dynamic women in STEM careers during live virtual field trips. We're excited to bring STEM Explore to life thanks to support from our founding sponsor, United Technologies. You can explore a number of STEM careers as well as tune in for upcoming live events just like this one by visiting our website, stemexplore.org. Now, I'd like to recognize and thank STEM Explorer's five partner sites across the country, Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Pow Valley, Youth Power 365, Mech Ed, Love a Sea Turtle, and YWCA Hartford Region. Now, I'd especially like to recognize the sites that are joining us live tonight. So we have sites from all across the country. So let's start in North Carolina in Greenville with our friends at Love a Sea Turtle. Now, we have a group joining us from the ENC Youth Scuba Club in, sorry, not Greenville, Winterville, North Carolina. So hello, everyone in North Carolina. How are you? Good. Good. Wonderful to see everyone tonight. All right. Now let's head over to Charlotte, North Carolina, to our partners at Mech Ed. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Wonderful, to, Wonderful see to see you all this evening. So excited to have you. Now for our partners at the Boys and Girls Club all the way over in California. And I say that because I am located in Florida. So Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley. Hello, Sierra Vista Clubhouse. How are you tonight? We're good. We're good over Excellent. here. Wonderful to see you. <laughs> Wonderful. And let's head over to our friends across town in Santa Clarita, California, to the clubhouse at New Hall. Hey, everyone. <laughs> All right, we've got some rowdy crowds tonight. Wonderful to have everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, for those of you who are tuning in live on our YouTube channel or on STEM Explorer, we want to hear from you as well. Because believe it or not, you can submit your questions and interact with our expert tonight, Patricia Delcourt. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can go ahead and use the chat space, which is either to the right of your viewer or just directly below. On stemexplore.org, simply click on the window that says submit questions and we will monitor that. So please submit your questions using those chat spaces and we would love to hear from you. You can start submitting questions to our engineer expert right now or you can do that later on. We have plenty of time set aside for question and answer. Now, I'd also like to introduce my co-host for tonight. Joining us all the way from Australia, Australia is Haley Charlton Howard. Good evening or good morning, Haley. Morning, guys. How are we? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Um, sweltering it down in the heat here. So um, you guys are talking about staying warm. I am in roughly 40 degree heat myself, although 40 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> Wonderful. And where are you coming to us live from, Haley? I am coming to you live from Melbourne, Australia. Excellent. And um, what time is it there? First thing in the morning, it is 10.34. <laughs> and what date? It is the 6th of December. So, so I'm technically in the future, guys. Perfect. So this is mind-blowing. Thank you, Earth Echo International. For broadcasting from the future. So we're so, <laughs> we're so excited to have Haley. Haley is part of our Youth Leadership Council here at Earth Echo International, and we're so proud of all the youth that work with us. And so uh, Haley will be helping me to co-host tonight's event. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And I want to introduce you to tonight's STEM Explorer mentor, a mechanical engineer in Chicago, Illinois, named Patricia Delcourt. And Patricia is with our good friends at Xylem. So hello, Patricia, how are you? Hey, Casey, I'm good. Excellent. It's a little bit uh, colder here in Chicago than you guys are talking about. It, we actually got almost 12 inches of snow for Thanksgiving, so. Woo! 
Yeah, I would uh, love 87 degrees right now. <laughs> So you're trying to stay warm as well. Haley, yeah. Haley is the one that has the good weather out of us all. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, Patricia. Well, to get things started off, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and what inspired you? Sure. Uh, so as you guys already know, my name is Patricia Delcourt. I'm 27 years old. I'm a mechanical engineer. I am originally from Poland. I moved to the United States with my parents and my brother right before starting seventh grade. Um, I'm from a medium-sized town south of Krakow and very close to the Slovakian border. Um, the transition was not easy, uh, you know, moving t from a different country to the US. Uh, but it taught me a lot of uh, different skills, like working in environments that I'm not used to, working with people in with different cultures. So, um, you know, made the best of it. And here I am. Um, I actually got married two years ago, and we took our honeymoon to Poland. So that's a picture of me from a mountain range 30 minute drive from my hometown, right there in the middle. Um, a little bit about what led me to engineering. My path to engineering was not very direct. Um, when I was younger, I really liked three things. Um, I loved arts and crafts ever since I was a very little girl. Um, and my mom still tells me stories about uh, how I would spend my afternoons cutting out all my magazines and making dioramas about uh, Greek mythology or ancient Rome or red foxes or, you know, just sitting and drawing comics about a little lizard who traveled around the world. Uh, so it was a lot of that kind of creative energy going on when I was a little kid. Um, then when I started high school, uh, when I started school, math really uh, sparked my interest. I really loved how most math problems have one answer, but you have multiple different so uh, ways you can get to that solution. So that process, uh, finding processes really, uh, really inspired me. Um, and then when I was in, um, in high school, uh, junior in high school, I fell in love with physics. Uh, physics connected math and art for me in a very uh, unexpected way. So now I had pictures, you know, free body diagrams and projectile paths, and I could explain them with math. So that was really, really cool. Um, the picture on the right is actually me from nine years ago from high school, uh, next to one of my pictures at an art show. Uh, so how did I become an engineer, right? Uh, for a little bit, I played around with the idea of becoming a book illustrator, right, with that art background, but I didn't really see myself pursuing that career. Um, the only uh, open house at two year, university I actually attended was to the Columbia University Art in Chicago. And after that open house, I knew for sure I could not make it as an artist, I just did not have that confidence in myself. So I decided maybe going science option would be better. Um, unfortunately, theoretical math, theoretical physics seemed just too heavy for me. And no one in my family pursued careers in science, so I didn't really have an exposure to what options were out there for someone like me. Um, so with that, I didn't want to attend a four-year university right away, so went to a community college uh, near where I lived. Two years, got my associate's degree, met some amazing people, gained some amazing skills, um, and the people I met were at different stages in their education, which was really cool because I could see which paths they were planning to take and kind of see if any of them worked for me. Um, and that's when I learned about engineering. Um, in the beginning, I was uh, between industrial engineering and mechanical engineering, um, obviously chose it, uh, mechanical engineering because of how broad it was. Um, I really liked the idea that I could learn so many things and go into so many different uh, career paths with mechanical engineering. So that really interests me. Um, so I did my bachelor's at uh, UIC, University of Illinois at Chicago, um, where I participated in a club called Chicago Engineering Design Team, where we designed robots for competitions, like Battle of the Robots style type of stuff. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Um, that picture on the far right, the, the gentleman with the very unfortunate mustache in the middle is actually my husband now. Uh, we made him cut silly mustaches uh, whenever we were at competition, and uh, he actually promised if we won to dye his mustache pink that year, and we did. We got first place, so I have a picture of him with a pink mustache, but I didn't want to embarrass him too much. Um, so participating in the club was a lot of fun, and it really solidified in me, yes, 
engineering is what I can do. It, it has that energy and that passion and those three kind of passions of mine that I could tie together um, and work with and do every day. So. Yeah. Awesome. That's a great introduction. What a great story. I love the fact that <laughs> you subjected your husband to that. Well, now husband, but yes. <laughs> um, that's fun to have a little bit of fun with competition. Every time you want a heat, you got to tell him to do something different. But I also really love your story about how you weren't quite sure. And so not to feel pressured to go to a four year university right away, you just decided to kind of dip your toes in and see where things were going to lead with uh, going to a community college. And that's usually a good alternative for a lot of students, especially because those community colleges are usually right in their hometown. So that's usually, if you're uncertain of a career, that's definitely something um, that is to consider and definitely leads to really great things. So I really love that part of your story. Um, so do you, why don't you talk a little bit more about um, Xylem, the company that you now work for? Sure. Um, Xylem is really uh, a really complex company, so it's really difficult to explain, but I'll try my best. Um, I, jo I joined Xylem three and a half years ago, uh, right out of college, and Xylem is calls itself a water technology company. Now, what does that really mean, right? So we do a multitude of things within the water cycle. So from moving water and wastewater using pumping um, to analysis of lakes and rivers uh, for, you know, pH values, similar things to what Earth Echo does, just on a little bit bigger scale. Um, we treat wastewater before, uh, before it is returned to natural resources. Um, we run these really cool robots um, that test large pipes for leaks. So uh, we also design smart meters to track water usage in residential homes. So honestly, you know, getting from the beginning of the uh, water cycle to the end, we're trying to be in every part of it. Um, you can see that we are operating out of 360 locations in 40 countries uh, with majority of our market right now in North America and Europe. Um, so yeah, uh, you guys can also see a short blurb about our corporate citizenship program called Xylem Watermark. Um, I will touch a little bit more on that later on in the presentation, but um, it's also something that I'm very proud of Xylem for doing. Excellent. So um, now that we kind of have a basis for Xylem and they do so much, how about diving into what you are doing there? Of course. Uh, so like I mentioned, I joined Xylem right when I graduated college. So I'm uh, starting in my career. Um, and I was actually fortunate enough to get hired into the exact position that I wanted, which was in new product development. So uh, Xylem, like a lot of other companies, has what's called the new product development process. So this process outlines all the tasks that we need to do to get the product from a rough brainstormed idea on a napkin to an actual product on the shelf that a customer can look at by. Um, so what that means for my for me is that every day I can work on something different, right? Some days I'll be working on brainstorming new ideas for a couple months, and then we'll transition into doing calculations and doing mechanical designs. So that's a really cool part of my job. Um, our team is actually in the final process, final stages of a project that I'm working on. So Currently, I'm working with our software engineers to have the product ready to select on our website. I'm also working with our manufacturing engineers to make sure the factory is ready for new parts coming in. I'm also working with our marketing department to make sure that all the brochures and all the pictures are ready for marketing resources. Um, so this job is really equal parts creativity and science. Some, some days it's more creative, some days it's more science oriented, but there's always those two parts that are uh, together working to create something. Um, so I am a part of a team that designs new centrifugal pumps. So uh, we have a cross section on the top left of a centrifugal pump. And then on the middle bottom, you have a um, diagram of the flow of water inside of a uh, centrifugal pump. So we have the impeller, which is the red part in the middle. Um, when it spins, the water comes in through the suction flange, uh, that first yellow arrow, and then into the impeller eye, um, and then is pushed outside of the impeller veins through the discharge valve using centrifugal force. 
So um, I think most of you be, are familiar with the concept of centrifugal force, uh, but I also include a little illustration of the concept. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the experiment where you put water in a bucket, you tie a string, and then you spin it really, really fast, uh, and the water stays in the bucket without falling out, that's basically the concept. Excellent. So now, Haley, um, sorry, uh, Patricia, there's <laughs> so many people on this on this call. Um, do you explain a little bit more um, about kind of your path in Xylem and, and where Xylem is all over the world? Sure. So um, I am out of the uh, Morton Grove, Illinois office, which is a suburb of Chicago. Um, and I mentioned that we have, you know, uh, offices in 40 different countries. Um, and that means that not only do I work with a diverse team of functions within the building I'm in, but I also work with a diverse team from different countries and different uh, time zones. So I've had a pleasure of working with uh, two teams of talented engineers from India and from China. Um, and I actually got the chance to visit them in person. Um, you have a picture of me from Shanghai, China. Uh, which is our uh, main Chinese China office. And then I also got a chance to visit the Maharaja's Palace near our Xylem Vadodara office in India. Um, I also got the chance to visit our office in Cambridge. Now in Cambridge, they work on different technologies than I do. So it was really cool going to visit and see what they're working on and get a better vision of Xylem um, and then get an exposure to resources and contacts that I can potentially use in the future. Awesome. That was such a good rundown of your background, um, how you were introduced to engineering, where you grew up and, and what kind of sparked your interest and where you are with Xylem now. So that was really excellent. Thank you. So now comes the time, folks, for questions. So we want everyone out there to think of some questions that Patricia could answer. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our interactive sites that have joined us by video this evening to see what questions they have for Patricia th tonight. So we're going to start with our friends at Love a Sea Turtle at the ENC Youth Scuba Club in Winterville, North Carolina. Now, while we're waiting for our first question from there, I do want to remind everybody out there that if you are watching the live streams on YouTube or stemexplore.org, remember to use that chat space or click on submit questions and we are monitoring those so we can definitely answer your questions if you chat those to us. All right, love a sea turtle in Winterville, North Carolina. What questions do you have for Patricia? What is the coolest thing that you have ever seen? Um... The coolest thing I've ever seen uh, work-wise was one of my products. Um, I'm currently working on very, very large pumps. Um, so if you can imagine an uh, impeller that is 48 inches, so four feet wide um, in diameter, now that has to fit into a casing that has a flange of 32 inches. So, you know, um, almost three feet. And if you think about that, there's a casing around it. And if you imagine, you know, a small room, that's the size of the product I'm currently making. So when you look at it on screen, you know, it's this little model that you spin around on the screen and then you see it in person and it's, you know, wow, this is massive. And I did that. So that was, that's really cool. Excellent. All right, ENC Scuba Club. What other questions do you have for Patricia? One of us was wondering what were the dangers of, of your job? Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. So uh, the facility I work at, uh, at uh, is actually an office connected to our manufacturing floor. So um, the biggest uh, danger you could say is if I go out to the manufacturing floor, I have to make sure that I wear all my protective gear. So I wear different glasses with shields on them. I wear steel toed boots. Um, so every factory that I go go to around the world or in the US, you have to make sure that you follow the proper safety procedures when you go out to the floor because every factory has different dangers within it. So our factory, I don't require hearing protection. But if I go to a different factory, I might need hearing protection. So it's just those kind of environmental, uh, well, not environmental, but those manufacturing dangers that I just have to be cognizant of. You know, forklifts um, are always zooming around the factory, so got to stay, you know, on the path of pedestrians. 
Um, and then when I travel, I need to always make sure that, you know, all my vaccines are up to date. I need to know where the water is safe to drink, that type of things. So, yeah. Excellent. All right, let's hop on over and ENC Scuba Club, we will come back to you, but let's head over to Charlotte, North Carolina with our partners at MechEd. MechEd, what questions do you have for Patricia? Okay, so one of the questions that we have is how flexible is your schedule? Is it like a nine to five sort of thing or um, like what is your schedule like? Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually lucky enough to work at a place that is pretty lenient about my start and end time. So I have a certain amount of hours I have to put in in the week, but uh, they understand that, hey, if I have to have a 6 a.m. conference call with China because it's already late over there, you know, I'll come in at, you know, 5.30 a.m., do my phone call and then I'll leave after a certain amount of hours, you know, my eight, eight or nine hours that I have to work and then go home. So it varies from company to company and it varies on... Um, kind of uh, what your function is. Uh, for example, my husband is also an engineer and he has a strict, you know, you can't come in before eight and you can't leave before five. So it's a little bit different every place you work. Excellent. All right, Mech Ed, what other question do you have for Patricia? Um, I was asking what thing do you think you're more like most proud of that you've been a part of? Um, I think the Watermark program uh, is something that I'm very proud of. Um, not only am I proud because uh, I work for a place that puts so much thought into corporate in, uh, into corporate citizenship and um, that kind of engagement, um, but also it has uh, broadened my horizons to different um, community organizations within uh, the U.S. and within my community. So. Um, knowing that I work for a company that really promotes those ideas and that helps me um, volunteer more is uh, a real big pride for me. So the Watermark um, organization within Xylem is uh, something I'm really proud of. Excellent. And we will um, let Patricia tell us a little bit more about Watermark once we get through this first round of questions, because I do want everybody to hear about that, because it is a wonderful program that Xylem has. All right. Great questions, everyone, so far. So let's head over to California. And by the way, MechEd, we'll come back to you after a bit. Um, California, Santa Clarita, uh, the Boys and Girls Club out there. Let's start off with the Sierra Vista Clubhouse. What questions do you have for Patricia? Okay, so we had a girl that was wondering what the longest amount of time that you've spent dedicated to a single project was. Uh, so if you guys remember, I said that I joined Xylem three and a half years ago. Uh, I've been on the project I'm on three and a half years right now. Uh, the project actually started in 2014 um, and then went kind of offline until 2015. And then when I started, the project was uh, six months into development. So three and a half years. Wow, excellent. All right, Sierra Vista Clubhouse with Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley. What is another question you have? All right, we've got one more. Go ahead. You don't want to ask? Okay, so we had, we had a girl that was wondering what your favorite color was. My favorite color is green. I love it. Perfect, thank you. So let's head across town to our other friends at Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley at the Newhall Clubhouse. Newhall, what questions do you have for Patricia? So given the fact that you guys have different factories, uh, how often do you travel and what's your favorite part about traveling? Uh, so it's a little bit it's different little bit year to year. Uh, how much I travel. Uh, I usually do one or two international trips a year. Um, and then depending on how busy we are with the project, I travel within the US as well. Um, so it kind of varies day to day. Most of my travel within the US is to actually visit other sites of Xylem to learn about what they do rather than work on my project. Um, so Xylem is working really hard right now to unify a little bit more between our sites. Just because there's, you know, 360 of us, really hard to know where any place is and what they do and who works there and what resources they have. So that's more of my travel within the U.S. Um, so that's kind of an overview of my travel schedule. Um, 
And my favorite part about traveling is definitely the food. Um, I love eating the different foods when I travel. Um, I actually had Indian for dinner uh, last night just because I loved Indian food so much when I visited. <laughs> yeah, someone's happy about that. Um, so yeah, that and of course meeting my coworkers uh, because you know it's one thing to listen to someone on the phone and read their emails, but it's another thing to see someone in person, put a put a voice to a face. Uh, eat lunch together, you know, meet their family. So that's kind of my favorite part of it too. Oh, I couldn't agree more. In fact, everybody at Santa Clarita at the Boys and Girls Clubs, I just got to meet them last week. So that's definitely um, a perk about traveling that I will definitely echo with you. All right, New Hall Clubhouse with Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley. What other questions do you have, you for, have Patricia? for Patricia? Do you ever get bored of working on a project? And if so, which one did you get bored of? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, I mean, being on a, the project that I've been on, uh, being on it for three and a half years, uh, you definitely hit valleys in not only productivity, but interest, you know? Um, and because it's such a big project, you can get stuck on a task that, you know, first day doing it, it was fine, you got through it. And then, you know, two weeks of doing the same task over and over again gets a little bit boring, but you have to keep in the back of your mind, okay, once I get through this, the next gate of the process is coming soon and then we can get, move on and, you know, get this project out. So um, yeah, the project that I'm on is actually pretty big. Uh, we are releasing more pumps um, into multiple locations. This is kind of a first project where we are not only releasing in the US, uh, but we're releasing outside of the U.S. So uh, we're dealing with, you know, dual measurement systems and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the project that I'm on. So it's had fun parts and it had some slow parts. <laughs> Great. Excellent questions, everyone. Now, Interactive Sites, we will come back to you again for another round of questions. And remember, those of you watching on the live streams, you can chat us those questions. In fact, before we go back to you, Patricia, to talk a little bit more about Xylem and about their Watermark program, we do have a question from someone on YouTube. In fact, Emily asks, what was it like when you first started your job? Did you feel welcome when you got there? And were there other women there with you that could help to support your career? That's a really good question. Um, when I started, it was more of a new job type of feel where you come in and you know, you have to learn all the ropes, you have to learn all the people, remember all the names. Um, so that was a little bit hard uh, in the beginning, but I never at any point have I felt unwelcome. Um, the Xylem onboarding process was really great. So um, it was just remembering the names because I'm really bad at remembering names. Um, but yeah, um, our department, the new product depart development department is actually only six people. So I'm the only woman in that department, but Xylem at Morton Grove, Illinois, near Chicago, we have multiple different engineering departments. So we have a sustaining engineering department, a manufacturing engineering department, um, measurement and controls department. So across all those departments, um, I would say it's about 25% women, um, which is an okay number. I would like to see it higher, uh, but that's just me. Um, and uh, there is a good mentorship program. I'm actually, I do actually have a personal mentor at Xylem, uh, who's really wonderful. They made sure to pair me up with someone who isn't necessarily an engineer, but has an engineering background and uh, converted into a uh, product uh, management, which is kind of a sales engineer type position. So she's been really great. Uh, getting me accustomed to everything, so. Excellent, that was an awesome question coming from Emily on YouTube, thank you all. So again, keep submitting those questions and those of you at the interactive sites, we're gonna come back to you for another round of questions. But before we do that, we do wanna learn a little bit more about Xylem, what they do, and in fact, Xylem's impact on the community and one of your favorite parts that you mentioned, their watermark program. Yeah, so uh, this is a little bit about Xylem Watermark. Um, Jacqueline, would you mind going one slide back? I think we're missing one slide. Oh, we're missing one slide, that's okay. Um, so 
Uh, I'm lucky enough to work for a company that uh, takes the position of a water technology market leader very, very seriously. So I'm sure all of you have learned about the water cycle at school. So you know that there is no new water, right? It's the same water moving through the cycle over and over again. So we really need to take care of this really finite resource. Um, so when we design new products at Xylem, we are fully cognizant of the scarcity of water. Um, and energy waste. So we make sure that our products operate to the highest standards of efficiency and they're built with safe and uh, sustainable materials, right? We also build our products to last. I've heard of pumps that are out in the field performing for over 30 years. People forget about them and they just run and run and run. So that really helps in reducing waste. Xylem also helps cities uh, prepare for anything that might strain their water infrastructure with solutions that uh, prevent people from not having access to clean water. Um, we help dewatering de efforts during natural disasters. Um, and we also work, so we are working every day, right? To figure out better, more efficient and safer ways to solve not only the current, but also future water needs of the world. Um, and I think that's really cool. So um, a little bit about Xylem Watermark, um, which, uh, is the Corbett Citizenship Program at Xylem. It started right around 2015, so right around when I started, um, and it provides em uh, employees with volunteer opportunities and incentives um, and donation matches. So the last year we actually reached over 56,000 volunteer hours with uh, 1,500 employee particip uh, employees participating. So that's really, really great. Um, so we build water towers in India, and we uh, also helped uh, with the Houston relief efforts after the hurricanes hit. Um, so I participate in a lot of the events. Um, I also participate with the partners that uh, Xylem Watermark partners with outside of uh, Watermark events, so uh, kind of my private time. Um, and those hours also count towards my volunteer goals. So Xylem is really uh, incentivizing employees to volunteer, which is really cool. Um, and I also participate in the Earth Echo Water Challenge. Um, I train a lot of the Xylem employees at Morton Grove how to use the kits. So it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy that part. Awesome. And we do have those kits here. We're going to talk about um, Earth Echoes Water Challenge kits um, with our friends at Xylem, who is actually a sponsor of our Water Challenge program. So that's really excellent. And Xylem definitely stands behind their employees um, with engagement in the community. We see that firsthand here at Earth Echo International. So that's really incredible. Thank you so much, Patricia. This was great. Now we're going to go back to everybody for another round of questions because we do have some time left. So before we hit our interactive sites we do have another question we're going to stay on that foodie train we have a question coming in from youtube and the question is what is the most favorite food you've ever had when you were traveling and where was that um so that would be in india um there was a um potato curry that i really really loved and i actually got it for uh breakfast the first time i was there um, and I wanted to try it out. And of course, uh, it was spicy, which I'm not used to. So spicy breakfast was a little different for me. And um, I actually learned the word for potato from ordering that dish. And whenever I would be at any restaurants, I would look for the word potato in all the curries just to order that again. But yeah, it was really good. Excellent. All right. So we are going to go for another round of questions. So we're going to check back in with our interactive sites. And to do this, I would like to call on our Youth Leadership Council member, Haley Charlton Howard from Australia, to field the questions from our partner sites. So Haley, take it away. Thanks, Casey. Um, I'd like to check in again with our interactive partner sites. So let's go to our friends with Love a Sea Turtle at the ENC Youth Youth Scuba Club, can't pronounce it, in Winterville, North Carolina. Um, so ENC Scuba, what questions do you have for Patricia? Has there ever been a time where you have enjoyed your job? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, there is uh, a lot of times I enjoy my jobs. Uh, it's more, I find myself enjoying my job more when it's more creative tasks. So if it's designing something in a computer aided design drafting software, um, or if it's, uh, you know, brainstorming ideas because we're running into an issue and we need to change the design. Um, so those are kind of my favorite parts of the job. 
Um, I definitely would say that I enjoyed it a lot more in the beginning, just it was so much more fresh and new. Um, and then, you know, hit a little bit of a lull and then it got better again now because yay, we're almost done with this project. So yeah, I think that kind of summarizes it. ANC Scuba, do you have any other questions for Patricia? You were, all, you were also wondering what the average salary is for mechanical engineers. <laughs> So uh, in the Chicago area, um, I am currently uh, engineer two at this point. My level is engineer two. So in the Chicagoland area with my experience, I would say um, somewhere between 75 to 85 would be a good kind of range. Awesome. Um, oops, sorry. Um, now let's head over to Charlotte, North Carolina, with our partners at MechEd. Um, MechEd, any questions? Um, I had another question. I know that you said that um, you think you would feel more, like more comfortable, like you wanted um, more girls in your group. Do you not feel comfortable with um, the amount of girls, or do you think you just would feel more comfortable with more girls? Um, I think there is a lot more ideas that are different if the work environment has different people in it. Um, so, you know, we have this idea of what a face of the engineer is, right? We kind of picture someone when you say engineer, you know, you know who you picture. So I think the more diversity we bring into any, any career, it brings more ideas, more productivity, just better things come out of having more people who are different working together. Right. My boss actually has this quote that he has on his desk that says, um, I don't know everything, but I know I don't know everything and someone will know what I don't know. Right. So you kind of have to have the spirit of. Well, I want to see different people. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not that I'm uncomfortable. It just would be better work uh, interactions if there was different ideas coming through. So, Ed, do you have any other questions, Patricia? We have one more. <laughs> um, are there times where you wish you would have done something else instead of engineering, where you much rather um, do something else in a career? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's, that's totally normal. That's totally um, normal. Um, so especially on those days when, you know, I've been staring at the same spreadsheet for the last, you know, 80 hours and I'm just kind of done with it. Um, you know, everyone kind of gets those days, I feel like. Um, but it's never been to the point where I absolutely cannot do this anymore. I need to change what I do every day. Um, it's just been kind of sitting there and imagining what my life could have been like if I pursued a different path, right? But. I think everyone kind of has those moments, um, but yeah, they've never been overwhelming. So I think that's a good sign. Ooh, uh, now let's check in with the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley and Sierra Vista Clubhouse. Um, what are your questions? Hi, so we actually had the same girl as earlier wondering how long you project the current project to go on for into the future? <laughs> um, we're actually releasing the project in January uh, 2018. So January 14th, 2018 is the official launch of the project at a trade show. And we're gonna begin taking orders and sending out pumps probably February, March of that of next year. So almost there. <laughs> Uh, Boys and Girls Club, do we have any other questions for Patricia? Yes, we had somebody that was wondering, uh, what do you think is going to be the greatest challenge for the engineers at your work in the future? Um, so the one 
thing about Xylem is that uh, Xylem is a corporation that has a lot of different brands within it. So we have uh, multiple different pump brands that work in multiple different applications. Um, and I think the biggest thing that we're trying to do right now is to become one Xylem. So instead of me sitting in the office and designing a pump, why don't I get together with someone who designs systems for utilities, we get together and we create a system solution, right? So instead of a product solution, move into a system solution, which is going to be difficult with the amount of sites we have, the amount of products we have, um, you know, different countries, um, different measurement systems even. Um, so that's really a complex thing that we're trying to tackle as a company right now. But it's really exciting. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be really great. And finally, we go to the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley with the New Hall Clubhouse. Um, do we have any questions for Patricia over in New Hall? Yeah. yeah then, Hi. Patricia, yeah. What are your hobbies? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I have a lot of hobbies. Um, I could probably spend the next five minutes listing them off. Um, Today I did a little bit of knitting. Uh, I read a lot. Um, I cross stitch. I play video games. I play with my cat uh, who's napping right now. Um, what other hobbies do I have? I hike. I garden. So a, a lot. I don't. I don't even want to list them all. <laughs> um. Do you play Fortnite? <laughs> I don't. I don't play Fortnite. I am not good at any first person shooters um don't have those skills i can't <laughs> but i like to play strategy games and uh simulators that kind of stuff that's kind of more along my line rpgs you know mmos that you know that kind of stuff so yeah loving the damn skies well done <laughs> <laughs> um so now i'm just gonna jump over to we have a couple questions on youtube um so yes. says, is there a time when you didn't like your job? Um, trying to think. I don't think there was a time where I didn't like my job. Um, now, what I'm trying to say with that is I don't think there was a time where I sit, where I came into work and I said, I hate this place. I'm just going to leave right now. Right. Um, but Similar to the other question I answered, you know, everyone's going to have their down days and everyone's going to reach a point where they want a change and they want to change something about their lives. And how deeply that hits you as a person is when you decide, wow, I feel like this. Do I change what I do? And I usually get through those feelings with, no, I love what I'm doing. So, no, I don't hate my job. <laughs> Very nice. Um, we have Emily's sister saying, have you met anyone important like the governor? No, no. The only important person I've met is my husband. Uh, don't tell him I said that. Um, but other than that, no one's super, super important. I have, when I was flying out of India last year, the airport was on super high security because a state person was flying out uh, the same time I was. So. That was really interesting. A lot of camera people, uh, flowers and all that jazz, but I tried to skip it to get to my flight. <laughs> so. Very nice. Um, Yavia says, what are the weird foods you've had? Weird foods. Um, the weirdest foods I've had were definitely in China. Um, they usually serve their fish whole when they serve them to you, fish scales and eyes and all. So that was really interesting, uh, having your the food stare back at you. Um, I've had uh, pork knuckles, so that was that was really interesting, kind of chewy, but it was pretty cool. Um, some weird vegetables that I've never seen. Um, I'm trying to think what else was kind of interesting. Um, in India, they drink buttermilk when they eat. Sometimes the place that I was at Gujarat, so they have. A lot of you know that kind of spicy stuff so they serve you mango puree and buttermilk together with food so that was really interesting because i don't know milk with dinner is kind of odd for me but yeah that's i think that's the weirdest that i can think of off the top of my head 
Excellent. I'm going to jump in here because I do know that our partner sites still have some more questions. And thank you, everybody on YouTube. Uh, there's one more question that I'm going to try to get to, but we are running a little bit late. But I do want to get to our interactive partner sites. Um, we're going to go back to the New Hall campus. I do believe they did have one more question to ask of you, Patricia, at the New Hall campus of Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley. When you work with people from different places, um, because they speak a different language, is there like a like a barrier like that keeps you or like somebody that translates from you or do they know English or stuff like that? Uh, they, yeah. Sometimes it depends um, on a lot of factors. So um, India, their I think their official language is um, uh, their not official language, but their um, government language is, is English just because they have so many different languages in India. So uh, a lot of people I work with from India, uh, not a lot of issues there. Uh, granted, they learn British English instead of American English. So there's a little bit of that going on, but it's usually not really that bad. Um, when it's uh, someone translating for me to speak to someone else, that can be a little bit off-putting. Um, especially if, you know, you tell them a huge paragraph of something and then they go back to the other person with two words and it's like, hold on, I don't know if you conveyed my idea correctly. So that's just, that's the biggest issue I've really run into. Um, but with the relationships uh, I develop with my, with my uh, coworkers, it's not, not an issue. Excellent. All right, we are going to hop over to the EMC Scuba Club um, in North Carolina with Love a Sea Turtle. I do know that they have another question. And then if everybody will agree to stick around, I know Mech Ed in Charlotte, North Carolina has another question too. So Love a Sea Turtle, we're going back to you at ENC Scuba Club to ask your last question. If anything goes wrong, what would be your backup plan? Uh, well, different different problems need different backup plans, right? <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit difficult to answer. Um, it's always nice to have a backup plan. Um, my usual backups are pretty um, kind of on the spot by the seat of my pants, figuring out how can we fix this issue. Um, it's really hard to plan um backup plans when we can we do and when we can't you know you just have to figure out problems as they come along the way um that's the only way to really do it and i find as an engineer more often than not you run into issues uh that you just weren't able to foresee and they usually come up when you talk to someone who has more experience than you or has been in similar situations than you so what's important is really creating connections and really having someone look at your project either with fresh eyes or with experienced eyes both are great because both expose different issues so if you can go through that um design um proofreading first that really helps mitigate problems later excellent all right, let's hop on over to MechEd in Charlotte, North Carolina. I know you have two questions, but we just have time for one. And MechEd, I'm gonna ask that you ask the first one about Xylem. I was thinking like, do you plan to stay um, at Xylem just in a higher position? Or do you have like, when, you, um, like, when you're doing really good, like have bigger plans? That's a really interesting question. Um, right now, uh, it's hard to foresee what my life's going to be like in the future, right? Um, it's hard to foresee any issues, any problems. Right now, the plan is, uh, yes, I would like to stay at Xylem, um, especially because I know that within Xylem, there's a lot of opportunities for me to not only move up in the company, but also move what is called vertically. So if I want to switch my position, from being a design engineer to move into a different department on the same level as me, that's totally possible within Xylem. So that possibility of mobility really uh, incentivizes me to stay um, and you know keep progressing in the company. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Meked. Now I'm going to combine, Meked did have a second question, but we also have another really good question coming in off of YouTube and I'm going to try and combine them. Um, so the second question from Meked was, um, if what you, uh, let's see, hang on. I'm sorry. Uh, what else would you do that you think you'd be really good at with the talents you have now? And I'm going to pair that with the question coming in from YouTube, which is, if you did take a career in art, do you think you would be just as successful as you are at engineering? Good questions. Um, I think the art one is going to be a little bit easier to, to answer. Um, I think the original idea that I had going into illustration, book illustration, was not going would have not been a correct path for me and i don't think i would have done well in it now on the other hand if i went into something maybe more science oriented like um architecture or uh doing me uh, medical drawings something like that if i stumbled into that while i was in art school i definitely think i could have done just as well as i did in, in mechanical engineering um, just because science is still a big part of my interests in my life. Um, so I definitely would have needed that in order to uh, progress. Excellent. Awesome. Great questions, everyone out there. This was really amazing. And we had great response on YouTube. In fact, we can't even get to all the questions on YouTube. I will tell you, though, that they are asking a lot about what kind of games you play, and they're asking more about food. <laughs> but we're going to try and stick to the STEM and the career questions. So sorry okay. we couldn't get to some of those. But all of our interactive sites, thank you so much. Those were fantastic. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And of course, thank you so much to Patricia Delcourt for being our STEM Explore mentor this evening, a mechanical engineer at Xylem. So thank you so much, Patricia. It has been a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Really great questions. You really made me think about my career more. <laughs> Haven't done that in three and a half years. <laughs> so if I get in trouble with my boss, I'm going to have to blame you guys. Uh, but thanks. It was really nice meeting everyone. That is wonderful. Thank you, Patricia. And I'd also like to, of course, thank our STEM Explore partner sites and especially those classrooms that have tuned in live today. Our friends at Love a Sea Turtle, uh, Mech Ed, and the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita uh, Valley. Thank you all so much. You guys had fantastic questions tonight. That was really fun. And of course, a big thank you to our co-host for joining us tonight all the way from Australia. Thank you so much, Haley, for helping me drive the ship this evening, or this morning, I guess. <laughs> Work is valid, work is, work is good. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Perfect. And Haley will actually be joining us tomorrow night too for our virtual field trip. So we hope you all can tune in for some exciting upcoming events here at Earth Echo. Now, Earth Echo has great opportunities for you. One of them is Expedition Water by Design. Now, this includes a mini grant contest that we are running focused on water by design, which explores the issues of water scarcity and drought through free innovative resources. Now, you can enter to win $500 for your uh, for your site by submitting stories of students exploring engineering design around water resource management or developing their own water conservation or restoration projects. For more information on that, you can visit earthecho.org. And you can see here our deadline is on World Water Day in March, so you have plenty of time to submit your mini grant. Now, believe it or not, you can also monitor the quality of the water in your community with the Earth Echo Water Challenge. Now, Patricia did mention this. Uh, our friends at Xylem are proud sponsors of Earth Echo's Water Challenge program, and they're heavily involved. But you can actually order Earth Echo test kits, and you can test the water in your community. So you can get out there, do some citizen science. You can visit monitorwater.org to find out information about how to order test kits, including submitting your data and for all the information about the water challenge. And coming in early 2019 is Earth Echo's newest expedition, Plastic Seas. We are excited to announce Plastic Seas that will launch in early 2019. And stay tuned as Earth Echo unveils free videos, lesson plans, and activities to educate students about plastic pollution in the ocean with innovative strategies to solve this global issue. Now, a fun fact is that Haley, who joined us from Australia, 
was actually on Expedition Plastic Seas because it did take place in Australia. So that's pretty exciting. And we're very proud of that program. So stay tuned to earthecho.org to look for that announcement and for those resources. And of course, be sure to tune in to our upcoming virtual field trips. STEM Explore will continue to bring relatable voices in STEM careers tomorrow evening, December 6th at 3 p.m. Eastern and 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We will speak with Marissa Weirich. She is an engineer that hails from Texas, and she has a fantastic story as well. Last but not least, we are very excited to announce that due to popular demand, we have an open question and answer session with many of the STEM Explore mentors we have featured this fall. Now that program will take place this Saturday, December 8th at 11 a.m. Eastern. So you can join us to speak with these amazing women in STEM careers. Patricia will be back on Saturday morning with us. So we're very excited to have her as well as some other amazing women that work in STEM professions. So to uh, register for that event and to submit your questions, just simply visit stemexplore.org. So for any information about these virtual field trips, simply click on that live events cabinet at stemexplore.org, or you can even click on the virtual field trip tabs on our left. And we will continue our exciting programs in 2019. Of course, you can follow along Earth Echo and all of our adventures and exciting programs by following our social media channels and by visiting our websites. So thank you again to our wonderful STEM Explorer mentor, Patricia Delcourt, and a huge thank you to our sponsor, our founding sponsor, United Technologies, for their tremendous support. We really couldn't do this program without them. So on behalf of Earth Echo, everyone, Thank you for tuning in. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and keep exploring.